Hello students, welcome back. Let us continue with chapter 14 statistics. Graphical representation of data. The second approach is histograms. So uh, histograms, as I just stated, it's a way to represent your data graphically and it is just like bar graph except for the fact that here in bar graphs what we were doing is we were taking ungrouped frequency distribution table and we were drawing respective bars for each of the category. But here we are going to take into account continuous class intervals and the bars that will be drawn are going to be proportional the area of the bar graph uh, of the bars are going to be proportional to the frequencies. So this is a very uh, important point and I will note it down later. But let's take a look at an example on page 249 of your textbooks. So like you can see we have a grouped frequency distribution table with different classes specified. So the weights of 36 students in a class is as follows. There are 9 students who uh, belong to the weight group. So the weights are in kg 30 to 30.5 uh, 30 to 35.5. There are 6 students who belong to the category of weight 35.5 kgs to 40.5 kgs and so on until you have the class interval 55.5 to 60.5 which has two students and this is the frequency that is the number of students and the total count is 36. Now we have these class intervals so how do we plot it? Now obviously this cannot be done on a bar graph because here we have a range. In bar graphs we had ungrouped frequency wherein we had uh, specific categories to list down for the bar graph but here since we have continuous class intervals let us see how we are going to plot this now we have our coordinate axis with x axis y axis your origin that's marked at zero so the origin always starts as zero and we'll write down the scale later on the measurements that we use on the x and the y axis so now whatever see these are the variables Right? And these are the fluctuating values. The number of students can increase or decrease depending upon uh, if a new student is admitted or is uh, or who leaves from the school. So these value can change, uh, values can change. So we have to plot these numbers on the x-axis because always the variables are, come, are going to come on the x-axis. So starting with 30.5. Now 0 to 30.5 is a huge gap right so what we do is we insert a break like this it looks like a small heartbeat sign and it is called a kink the kink is used to represent that there are missing values between 0 to 30.5 and we start our tabulation from 30.5 so 30.5 then you have the next one is 35.5. Now you see we are running short of space. So I am just going to alternatingly write the value. So this is going to be 35.5. Then you have 40.5. Then you have 45.5. Then you have 50.5. Then you have 55.5. And you have 60.5 and you can keep going on so 65.5 and so on so you can keep going on by adding these uh, variables or the class interval so what we are doing is we have continuous class interval this shows continuity right and now you will see that the bar graphs they are not going to be se uh, separated by gaps in between but they will be continuous so let's see how now first of all we have the count of the student the lowest count is 0 that is the lowest observation uh, lowest observation is 1 and the highest observation is 15 now again to plot 15 numbers out here is not really feasible so I take counts of less than 15 uh, of less than 1 so I'll say 2 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20. So 15 where will it come? It will come here right? This is going to be your 15. Similarly this is going to be 1, this is going to be 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 and so on. Now we need to plot these frequencies on the coordinate axis. So how do we do this? The first one is 9. So 9 is going to come here. So let's draw 9 is for the class interval 
30.5 to 35.5 so let's draw this bar Then you have the other class interval that starts from 35.5 to 40.5. What is the count? It is 6. So 6 is going to be here. Then you have the other class interval which is 15. So let's, this is 15 now here. So I'm going to just draw this bar. So can you note, do you notice that all these bars are now connected to each other? There is no gapping at all between them. Why? Because this is continuous class intervals. Then you have the class interval 45.5, 45.5 to 50.5. So this is 45.5 to 50.5, right? So this is 3. So let's see 3. 3 will be somewhere over here. And then you have 50.5 to 55.5. So 50.5 to 55.5, this is going to be 1. So 1 is going to be somewhere over here. Please make sure you are using a scale to draw this. Okay. Then you have the class interval 55.5 to 60.5, which is 2. So this is going to be 2 is here. And if you want, you can just reduce the length of the x-axis. So this is 65.5. This is your x-axis. And let's label the x and y-axis. So what is the x-axis? x-axis is weights in kilogram. And what is there on the y? What are we plotting on the y-axis? We are plotting the number of students. So, I will say number of students. How about the scale? The scale out here, 1 centimeter is equal to, what is the difference between, the, uh, what is the class size over here? It is 5. So, 5 or you can say 5.5 units or 5.5 kilograms on the x-axis. Let me just confirm this, 35.5 and 30.5. So this is going to be 5 kilograms because the difference is 5 between the class into, uh, between the upper limit and the lower limit. And what about the uh, y-axis? We are taking 2 students on y-axis. So this is a histogram. You can just shade the bars and please make a note of an important point that I discussed earlier as follows. The bars drawn or the area of the bars drawn, so area is very important. is proportional to the frequency. You will understand this where while we are doing a histogram of variable widths. Here if you notice the bar are of fixed width. So this is nothing but histograms with bars of fixed width wherein there is a constant difference of 5 between each of the class intervals, right? The upper limit minus lower limit everywhere is 5. But you will see in histograms of variable, uh, variable widths, this is not going to be unique throughout. That is the difference in the upper limit and the lower limit of a particular class interval. It's not going to be consistent throughout. So that is why the area of the bars drawn is proportional to the frequency. And we will take a look at histograms of variable widths in the next lecture. So please take a look.
Thank you for watching this video. Hope this video increased your knowledge. For more such videos and a completely free educational content, log on to www.epathshala.org or visit our Epathshala YouTube channel. We have each and every question solved for maths, physics, chemistry and biology. So subscribe our channel, share with your friends, like our Facebook page and follow our Twitter handle for regular updates and important educational tips and also win Epathshala goodies. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe this channel and enjoy the freedom of education.